I just want to cover a bit of grassroots as well from like back in the day. Tell us your, your, your journey from a wee nipper playing football or how did you even get into football mm. to getting scouted to like talk to us tell us tell us where it all started who yeah. was the club it started probably at boys clubs like I, I played at Celtic boys club just like down the road and just used to go and just kick the ball about and that and like just play some games and that just kind of enjoy football and probably about I say eight or nine that's when I get scouted by Celtic so I got scouted by Celtic for youth and I was there, like, enjoying myself in that, like, until I was about 13, maybe 14. And then they turned around and said I wasn't quick enough and behind, and uh, they just let me go. I remember just my mum just pulling up the training centre, um, saying, I've just phoned the guys, let you go, and I've just ran out of my training gear and jumped in the motor. And just drove away, and that was that, was that really. And I think one of my mates at Scott Martin, he was in at Hibs at the time, and he's phoned up and saying that I've I've spoke to the guy, he he'll get you in at Hibs. Uh, so I end up going there. As a, I think I was a centre mid. I went there. I, so I, mm. I, I used to play certain defensive mid, and uh, I went there. And till I was about sixteen, then I probably said I got a really bad injury. But it was probably a bit stupid for me. But like, see when we were younger, like we used to go up to like beach, but. Like, me and my pals and mm. that, and, and I've just fell asleep on the beach, and I've just burnt to it, like, burnt thingy, but we had a game the next day, nah. so me and my mate are like, oh, no, like, and I've just, I've generally dropped into the right back area and turned, and just pinged a ball it, and my hamstring completely went, like, tore off the bone, and I'm just like, oh, oh no, Ooh. and that just kind of hindered me, really, uh, and then, kind of got back fit, 17s and that, still playing set of mid and just got a phone call saying nah, we're not offering yet and we, we don't think you're good enough, basically. That was a 20 match at the time. And I think I was just, I, was just like, nah. I actually went and worked. It's mad how like, in, in, yeah, it's, it's crazy how like individual situations, like you just falling asleep on a beach could have like hindered your career. Yeah, exactly. I mean, fair play to you for like turning it around and obviously you, 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 you're a Scotland international now and it's like, it shows that you've turned it around mm-hmm. but it's got to be so many individual story, so many individual situations. It's like the butterfly effect, isn't it, BJ? Yeah. Like all these tiny little things that can completely change. Yeah, and, and I mean it, it, it is. <coughs> excuse me. Because people, I don't know, you probably get this when I watch, listen to people talking about young players and development, and it's like, is a young player is only going to get better? Mm. And you think, no, there are so many things that can stop him from getting better. And you've just yeah. described mm. one incident. Yeah. in your development fortunately you've been able to you've actually gone against what i'm saying by by getting better um mm. but yeah it, 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 it's so fragile the career yeah. um and you just got to enjoy it i mean as i say the, the fact your teammates the, the bit i'm still buzzing off is your teammates banging on the tables when you got the call up yeah. do you know what i mean because when when they know they, they're not going to do that just because you're a good guy they're going to do it because they know it means something to you so yeah. you, whatever your 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 focus or your goal was, i.e. how you you got there, especially after you, when you said a bad injury, I was thinking, oh, what would you do? A sort of ACL or something? Living hell, mm-hmm. ripping the muscle off the, completely off the bone. Yeah. Wow, never never had that ever. Mm-hmm. So you, yeah, top man. So top what? Man. So you come back from injury. Where was you after that? I was I still at Hibs. Come back then. Obviously, got told that I wasn't I wasn't good enough on that, and uh, yeah, you weren't like, getting a contract and that. So. I actually went and, I think I went and worked for two days in an office. And it was just, I'm just sitting in the office and just looking out the window going, this, nah, this cannot be it. But it <laughs> can't be it. Like, I'm just sitting there going, nah. And two days later, I was like, right, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm quitting. So I quitted that. Yeah. And then ended up, my mum actually phoned one of the coaches at Partick Thistle and just said, like, can you just bring him in? And because he had his own kind of, like, He's kind of like a kind of soccer school thing, so he's like, I'll bring him in, I'll okay. see how he is in that. And I went and done a few drills, and then he just phoned the guy right away, like done some shooting drills and that. He just phoned the guy right away saying that you need to get him signed. So I went there, signed for under 17s there, probably like pushing on to 18s. And I was, I think I was there for like three months, scored about 30, 30 goals or something in like 18 games. And just just your 30, yeah, yeah just, just, 30. Just, just, just the 30, yeah. <laughs> Uh, then yeah. <laughs> up to under 20s in Thistle and 
like even about the place, like everybody says, like you're the next big thing coming through in Scottish football and that. And I think then I was probably a bit young. I kind of thought I was a man, if I'm honest. Like maybe I was 18, 19, 20. I thought I was just like, like I'm, I'm just going to stroll through this. Like didn't put the work in off the park. My attitude was terrible. Mm. Like uh, just thought I kind of stroll through and play first team games and just get my move from there and that. And I was getting out too much. Like I was getting to the point it was just like. Us, us as a group at like under 20s we had a, a tight group who like love going out so we'd go like we usually play our development games on a Tuesday so we'd go out right after the Tuesday night we would need, need to go on the Saturday to do jobs for the, the, the first team that then after that straight out again at the t- obviously looking back like it was just it was just stupid and that but I don't really re- regret any of it if I'm honest like I think it's I think me doing that back then is just like made it so much clearer to me now and I've just got that out of the way and I'm just like kind of like focused on that so I think the day mm. I was actually on loan to Dumbarton at the time that the year I got released so I, I went on loan to air didn't work out went on loan to Dumbarton getting played like mid and that and we were in a releg- relegation battle so I got relegated for Dumbarton and, and part of this in one season so there's a wee fact that I've got relegated twice in one season with two different clubs <laughs> and I was just sitting going on no but then I, I was thinking like Party Fist on the Championship is probably my time to play and just kind of try and put yeah. myself in that and get put in the gaffer's office and went nah but we, we, can't, we can't offer you a contract uh, I'm just like oh. and that's when I ended up going to Ray Fogles and signing for I think it was like 175 quid a week and I was like 21 year old or something I think it was like that mm. but, and I, I was getting offered like three times that to go part time and train like twice a week and play on a Saturday but I just thought it was like I'm going to get one one last chance full time and as soon as I'm part time then I'm just going to fall out of the game completely it's really hard to come back to yeah. and then just for there I just kind of rose up and it's just been like an up, upward curve and I think I wouldn't have done when I was at Thistle and all like, the nights out and that like the penny dropped as soon as I got released and then for there I just, like, just kind of curved right up and it's probably the Mm-hmm. It was a blessing in disguise. It's the best thing that happened to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's not been straightforward, is it? It's good. You've had a couple of like sort of setbacks, mm-hmm. and it's. I. I don't think like sharing your story. I don't think it's like <clears> you've <throat> had these setbacks and you've realised that you've got to crack on. Mm-hmm. Like, I think you're just a young lad enjoying right. yourself as well at the same time, mm-hmm. and I think we've all done that. Um, but then there are certain professionals at a very young age. Is there anyone that you might have played with when you was young, like even younger, that's gone on? A lot further than where you are at the moment. Yeah. You mentioned uh, Kieran Tinney, didn't you? This, Kieran Tinney, uh... yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He was. I was at uh, Celtic when I was younger, so I've been there for years, and he's just kind of went right up. You know what I mean? But. Yeah. I thought he was going to say no, no. He was with me. He was getting the pound drinks. As well. <laughs> <laughs> he's just been. He's just been a bit lucky. <laughs> I watched because he gets sent to the bar. I think. He'd, he'd, he'd be kicked. Yeah, it's in, it's interesting listening to you saying that because when you talk about the sunbathing and then the the hamstring problem, you also mentioned the fact that your mum rang up. If if that phone call was not made, who knows what would have happened? But because of that phone call, we're, we're having this conversation now, yeah. talking about how well things have gone, and it's just one of those bizarre things. I used to I used to smoke, so um, things I used to smoke, and I, I, no one at Watford when I was a kid told uh, mm-hmm. would know that I smoked. And I, I got into a bit of trouble and my dad phoned up Watford Football Club to my coach and told them that I smoked. And I thought, I didn't want to go in. I was like, right, I'm going to get sacked, so I'm not going to go in. Still went in and the coach, Tom Wally, legend, he turned around and he says, you got to give up because if Graham Taylor finds out, you're going to get the sack. And it was kind of like, that was my warning. Yeah. And had my dad not done it, then Graham Taylor would have found out a different way at another time, do you know what I mean? Hmm. I don't, it's slightly different to a big injury, but what you, as I say, when you're looking at how fragile things are, that phone call, well, that's a, it was probably the best phone call you've had other than the the, uh, the Scotland manager phoning up your gaffer. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Fantastic. I wish my mum had Tottenham's number. <laughs> just ring them up and just say, oh, can you? 